On the night of the 13th of January, 1916, flooding rivers and high tides led to dozens of dikes being breached. The entire region around Amsterdam was flooded. But miraculously, the capital was spared. The horror at the idea of seeing this historical treasure being devastated by floods pushed the Dutch authorities to take action that transformed their territory forever. They decided to close off the North Sea Inlet on the edge of which Amsterdam was built. So it was decided to close off this branch of the North Sea. The Southern Sea was closed off by a dike and it was then the largest uh, dike in the world. A huge construction project was undertaken to build this gigantic dike, 32 kilometers long and more than seven meters high, cutting right through the North Sea. The Aftslight Dike, also known as the Enclosure Dam, was a technological feat for its time. This unique project confirmed the Dutch as world leaders in anti-flood technology. The dam took more than 20 years to complete. Tons of clay, concrete and scrap metal were required to create this enclosure dam, which came down like a guillotine in the open sea. The first mission for this construction was to protect Amsterdam and its 210,000 inhabitants at the time from the risk of high tides. Amsterdam, like all of the rest of the country and certainly the low-lying parts is protected by the dikes from flooding from the sea. There are smaller dikes also protecting it from the central lakes in the center of our part. So this is the basic safety that any city in the Netherlands has. So Amsterdam is part of that uh, uh, bigger infrastructure. Since 1932, Thanks to the Afslite Dyke, Amsterdam has been the best protected city in the Netherlands. Reassured, the Dutch then tried their luck by expanding even more. And to do this, they used a technique that dates back to antiquity, polderization. Since the 16th century, the Netherlands has expanded its territory by some 8,000 square kilometers, an area around the size of Corsica. We've always been threatened by water, by sea, by rivers, and we have defined a kind of uh, mechanical, a kind of machine, what Holland is, an artificial country, where we can beat the water. We, we push the water out and we create a dry land. Around one-fifth of the country is built on land reclaimed from the sea in the marshes. This reclamation is known as polderization. The Romans used these techniques back in the first century. To polderize an area, it must first be dried out. To do this, it is surrounded by a dike. Then with the help of windmills and now electric pumps, the water contained within the area is pumped out through canals. The water leaves behind muddy areas in which reeds or other plants are added to absorb the salt and complete the drying and desalination process. This marine land is thus transformed into arable land. The decision to create these polders was connected actually by the projections of the dem demographics of the country, as well as the necessity to become independent in agricultural terms, to be self-sufficient agriculturally. So we needed new land and we were very successful in doing so. There are fields as far as the eye can see, covered with green grass. But behind this image of nature, each plot of land here is artificial. Under these carpets of grass, the earth lacks fertility. Human beings have an amazing capacity to disrupt, but also to degrade and destroy entire ecosystems. 
You have to accept that in spite of our eco-engineering feats, no matter what we do, we'll probably never be able to create anything 100% natural. Creating something 100% natural a fantasy? Not for the Dutch. The most incredible example of this artificial nature is the creation of Flavoland, an entire province in the suburbs of Amsterdam that is the same size as Luxembourg. Flavoland was created in 1986. It was a huge project that had been under consideration for decades and which met the Netherlands' constant need for more land for agriculture. Between 1914 and 1918, there was a famine due to the First World War. This project came about to provide agricultural land. This crazy project would never have seen the light of day without the Enclosure Dam, completed in 1932. The dam created a lake, which allowed the Dutch to polderize areas of fresh water and thus create new land. But this reclaimed land is particularly vulnerable to flooding, and its inhabitants must live with that threat. The province of Flavoland is located at between 6 and 14 meters below sea level. The soil is fragile, and constant tides in the rivers make the risk of flooding a little greater every day. Paradoxically, um, the cities most at risk are not exposed to the sea, but further inland. And then uh, a city very much at risk is Lelystad, um, that actually is in a deep polder in an area that used to be part of the sea, but now is an inner lake thanks to a closure with a 30 kilometer long dike. Lelystad is just 60 kilometers from Amsterdam, and the historic capital and the new city have something in common the fragility of the soil. Amsterdam is located on swampy soil composed of soft peat and clay. This soil is a real challenge for architects. As far back as the 17th century, they had to find a way to make the foundations of the houses designed in the typical Flemish style hold firm in the ground. All buildings in Amsterdam are built on piles with wooden stakes. But to reach the first stable layer of solid sand, it was necessary to drill down to a depth of more than 11 meters, the equivalent of a four-story building. So every house you see, you have the house, you have the stilts underneath it, is put on stilts. And for example, if you go to the, the center of Amsterdam, there is a big palace, and underneath that palace, there is, uh, I think, 13,000 piles of 20 meters holding up one building. So the most dense forest of Holland is underneath one building. This underwater forest supports houses built on cob, a mixture of clay and straw. Designed to be submerged, this traditional material is very robust as long as it is not exposed to variations between air and water. But in recent years, traditional Amsterdam homes have been facing a new challenge brought about by global warming. This time, it is no longer flooding that threatens them. It's drought, which poses a danger to their foundation. This is a new phenomenon for this northern European capital. In recent years, the city has experienced long periods of drought and heat that make the water levels in the canals fall, exposing the cob to the open air, making it dry out and crumble. Then, when the water rises during the winter, it seeps in and eats away at the foundations. The historic center of Amsterdam is now facing a new risk, that of collapse. Holland is artificial, it's fake, and the people at the water board, they can manage to bring water up and down. 
Same if you're a DJ, you can also uh, tune the music and make the rhythm and the sound and the, the light. Well, that's how we also work with Holland. So if we have water storage areas, then if there's too much water, we bring the water to the water storage area, and by that, the water level in Amsterdam stays the same. If there's a lot of dry, we bring water from the water storage areas back into the water. So then still we have the same level. So the challenge is how to keep your water level always stable. Controlling the water, monitoring the level, and keeping it at a distance so it doesn't engulf the country. The Dutch have been fighting against water for centuries. But there is one danger that nobody can be fully protected against. Storms. Winters in the Netherlands always bring storms. The combination of very high winds and the North Sea at its highest level brings a real threat of flooding. The fear of seeing waves of icy, muddy water breaking on the coast is in everyone's minds. Every year, behind the dikes, they prepare themselves for the worst. And the worst happened to the Dutch on the night of the 31st of January, 1953. During this terrifying night, the province of Zeeland on the southern coast of the North Sea was battered by one of the most terrible storms Europe has ever seen. A combination of 160 kilometers an hour winds, excessively high tides, and a powerful depression from the northwest sent the water up to an exceptional height. Mankind has accomplished some absolutely incredible technical and technological feats. And we forget when we talk about water that water is so much more powerful. You cannot tell it enough how the power is of the water. And you should be afraid of that. Water shapes entire valleys and erodes everything in its path when it wants to. No matter how much technology you bring to it, it will always find a way. So it's up to you in the end not to get in its way. The phenomenon of coastal flooding begins away from the coast. Tons of water are lifted up by gusts of wind to crash down on inhabited land. Because the Netherlands are located in a delta where rivers meet the sea, they are extremely vulnerable. So if you think of the map of the North Sea uh, and the wind from the north, you see that it, it goes in, into a funnel. So the water levels are pushed up. And this can lead to uh, water levels that are four meters higher than the average sea level. The wind drove a huge amount of water inland and the water rose in the houses with incredible speed. The water came so high that my father decided we should go on top of the roof. We know people who have saved their lives. They put out the tiles of the roof and on the wooden construction they were floating. In the early morning of the 1st of February 1953, the storm-stricken region of Zeeland woke up to utter devastation. The disastrous consequences of this high tide traumatized the entire country. There were more than 1,800 dead, 100,000 homeless, and 160,000 hectares of land flooded. Once again, Amsterdam was spared, but the country was forever marked. Despite the fact that these events were caused by natural phenomena, the consequences of the high water were linked to human construction. The Netherlands' ingenious network of dikes built up over the years broke in 89 places. 